И спортбетском уникальное место для настоящего геймера. Только здесь возможны ставки на киберспортивные события. Ты знаешь толк в самых популярных играх и готов рисковать? Смотри регулярные трансляции и зарабатывай реальные деньги. И спортбетском живой азарт и холодный расчет. And all right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back once again. This is Room on Fire, and we have Virtus Pro versus USSR in a best of one game. And we are joined by Complexity's Hiko. So, Hiko, are you still around? I am. Excellent stuff. So that was a bit of an interesting game that we just saw, a tie between Fnatic and Virtus Pro. But, you know, I'm no, I'm no psychic. I can't read into the future. But I have a sneaky suspicion we're not going to see a tie between these two teams. What, what yeah, do I don't think so. I don't bet, but I think if I did bet, this would be one f I would bet on. No, I don't really. Well, I don't. I don't feel like telling people who are going to win, but I feel like most people already know. Exactly right. This this is one <laughs> of those games where if we and it, it's kind of one of the things I don't always enjoy about you know about casting games is that sometimes you end up in these situations where. If you pretend it's going to be a really even and fair and you know game, you're gonna you're gonna seem like you're an idiot basically. So you just have to say it like it is. Virtus Pro is in a very different league from the one that USSR is in, and because they just played really well against Fnatic, I don't see them. You know, maybe if they were on a really bad day and you know USSR had the best game of their life, maybe there'd be a chance for an upset. I guess in best of ones, there's always a chance for an upset. So never really you know you never really want to go all in on in a best of one game, but. I think this what this time it's it's a very very low chance, like microscopically low. I will say that this is a little bit different of a roster than the old USSR, and I know they have Kibikin now. I don't I don't think he was on them forever, um, but I will say that when we were boot camping, for it must have been DreamHack, we played against the USSR, which I think was was worse back then. They actually weren't just a team you could brush off. Okay. Um, so I I mean. I think you and I would both agree. We both expect Virtus Pro to win, but <clears throat> do I think it's going to be a sixteen to one? Eh, probably not. All right, so a little bit closer than that. Well, that's good news. That means we have something to to look forward to. Um, while we're just waiting here, we are waiting for them to reconnect back into the server and everything else. I want to remind you guys to click the follow button on the channel again. We're trying to climb that Twitch uh, top one hundred list. I don't think we'll get all the way to the top. There are some League of Legends channels out there that are kind of hard to deal with. But actually, we're at number 87 in the rankings right now. So if you guys keep clicking the follow button on our channel, then we really appreciate it. It helps us out a lot with impressing future sponsors and all that good stuff, um, which is not always so much fun. But it's pretty important if we want to keep getting more and more stuff into Counter-Strike. And that's what we want to do with the channel here, basically. That's the main goal. So thanks to all of you for already following and subscribing and all that stuff. It does help out, uh, us out a lot. What you can also do is follow us on Twitter, of course. I'm just going to click this... Uh, or spam this follow command here you get all the the links that you need but also you can go and follow hiko on um, on twitter and help him out uh because actually what are we up to now what's the what are what does the following look like right now hiko we're, we're over ten thousand, but I, how much? yes at, before this game i checked and i was at 10.1 all right so what i'm seeing ten thousand one hundred and forty right now if you hover over the okay. the, the the it tells you the actual number so mm -hmm. that's pretty good guys that means we've actually got more than a thousand followers in one day that's the most we've ever done for anyone on twitter so congratulations guys thank you very much for doing that and obviously kiko you know most of all thanks to you for for joining me otherwise i would have been solo casting for six hours and that's not fun oh well thank you for having me and thank you for uh getting me all the follows you did that's i do appreciate a it pleasure. It's always a pleasure. And what you can do as well, guys. So if you haven't realized already, every Wednesday we are doing our own Case King of the Hill tournament, which has been uh, so far really, really good. We had a bit of misfortune um, last time we did it with some uh, some DDoSing going on. But apart from that, we've had uh, a lot of fun with it and some great games as well. And there's always a raffle going on. And you guys can participate in a new one that's actually up now. So the Facebook link at the bottom of the page has changed. And you can go and click the, the link and see exactly what you can win. It's uh, definitely worth keeping up with that Facebook page because we do give away uh, new stuff pretty much every week. This time, it's a Zoe... Um, Celeritis keyboard, which is actually a really, really cool one. I've seen it myself as well, and it does look really nice. I'm still waiting for uh, for one to get out, and I think a mouse mat that's been signed by uh, by Semler and myself. Again, Semler's signature looking a lot more pro than mine, but <laughs> we did both sign. So there it is. That's the Facebook link at the bottom of the page. All you have to do is click like, and you will be able to participate. 
But we're gonna be on Mirage, Kiko, for this map, uh, for this matchup here. What do you, how do you feel about this Mirage map? It's been a while since they changed it from the C version to the to the Valve version. How yes. is how is the American scene liking this one? Um, I mean, well, we have to play all the maps for ESC and C, right? We have they, there's a default map for the week, and we have to play whatever map is that default map. So we can't just say, okay, we're not gonna play Mirage and just veto it out every mm. time. So we have to play. Uh, we have to play every map. Um, so Mirage, I think Americans are getting better and better on Mirage. I think we're starting to play it more and more now that, you know, obviously all the tournaments are playing it and we see a lot of the top teams playing it too. So there's people that the, the teams in America can quote unquote copy and try to mimic their play style of. So I think in general, Americans do like Mirage. And talking about, you know, USSR and Virtus Pro, I, I think... Nobody would argue to an extent that Virtus Pro probably has after EMS Katowice yeah. in Poland. I don't think anyone would argue that Virtus Pro probably has one of the best mirages in the world. Yeah. So although I did say USSR might sign a chance, yeah. The map makes you uncomfortable. The map, yeah, that's yeah. Well, I don't blame you. I, I think in my own in my own mind, I put Navi above Virtus Pro on this map, but um, but not a lot, maybe like two percent. So on any given day between Navi and Virtus Pro on this map, I'd have a really hard time betting on that match. Um, and Virtus Pro, you're right, they are really strong. So it's gonna be it's gonna be tricky here for USSR. So let me ask you a different question then. Say okay. you're you're in a you know you're you're the you're the guys on the on the team that's not favored here. You're USSR at this point. And you know what kind of Titanic monster you're about to face. What can you do to still take something away from the game so that it's not just a crushing defeat and a waste of, you know, 40 minutes of your time? How do you make sure you actually learn something? Well, I mean, that kind of comes on their own preparation. Did they prepare to play this map against Virtus Pro? And that's what you see a lot of the, the top teams do. I mean, if you play Virtus Pro on this map and then you play Nip on this map, they play it a lot differently. There's, there are definitely two different styles of play. Hmm. So they have to be ready for the way Virtus Pro plays. They need to be ready for those, you know, early A executes where they they run through their own smoke. They need to be ready for, you know, those those really coordinated B takes. And I think if they're prepared and they know exactly what Virtus Pro does, then they they could have a chance. But if they're just kind of coming in cold, they don't really know what's going to go on. I mean, it's it's Mirage, so they need to be prepared on this map if they have any chance to win. All right, so preparation and then adjustment and more preparation. Obviously, we have a knife round coming up before we do anything else. But for now, thanks for tuning in. This is Room on Fire, and we've got USSR versus Virtus Pro in a best of one game for the SLTV Star Series season number 10. I'm Anders, and with me is Hiko from Complexity joining us. That's the color cast. I really, really thank you a lot again, Hiko, for joining us. And we might be seeing a bit of a one-sided game here in favor of Virtus Pro. That's what we expect anyway. Um, but we'll see if we can learn something anyway. There's always... I, th I find this, that even in one-sided games, there's always something to learn about any team or any sort of setup. So I'm not I'm not too sad anyway. Yeah. If if Mirage is the map that USR, USSR actually plays, then maybe they can take, you know, use it as a learning experience. Use it, okay... Let's try some stuff against Virtus Pro, probably the best team on this map, and see what actually works and what doesn't. And then afterwards, they can kind of revisit the drawing boards and form their Mirage a little bit differently if they just get crushed right now. Yeah, they already try and deny a little bit of information to uh, to Virtus Pro in the middle with that smoke that they put up there. And actually, great shot coming out. Pasha down to 10 HP. So that smoke really worked out well. Now it looks like Kibakan is actually going to try and see if he can smoke off short where Neo is holding. So this smoke would be really good if they're going to try and go for some mid-control. That denies a lot of what Neo is really there to do. Actually, if you look at the radar, it's kind of cool looking. Like, there's there's literally just one guy everywhere. Yeah. I guess now they kind of moved around a little bit, but it just looks like there's going to be a bunch of 1v1 fights, and they're actually coming through Connector to try to take A, which seems like the smart play here. They don't really have anybody in the site. And they're hitting some great shots right now. USSR surprising us right now. I'm loving this. Pasha and Bayali down to 10 and 13 HP. They are going to pick up one kill, but that won't be enough here. And a one on four, they're going to go down, losing only one member on USSR's side with a very cool push. I really like almost everything they did that round, USSR. I'm not sure I'm a fan of the guy up in apartments peaking so early, but that's the only thing I didn't really appreciate. And even that worked out. What a round. 
Yeah, really, very fortunate for them to have dinked Pasha in middle that early and made him fall all the way back. So they had no presence in mid at all. They had no one getting any information. So they were able to just run up connector pretty much uncontested. <laughs> oh. But then there's Pasha. I think at least Keep It Real didn't have anything because he's usually the guy oping. So he's saving for an op. So that's really lucky for them that he's the guy that went down. But Pasha with a scout. Uh, well, now they're holding tight, the Russian team, making sure they don't throw anything away. Which yeah. Which is probably a good idea at this point, right? With Snacks all pushed all the way up in halls, or how he is right now, they're already going to assume they're going B, I feel. So I'm expecting it to have another guy rotating towards B already. And it looks like they're not. It looks like they're just staying really aggressive towards A. And now Posh is finally going towards B. Now they know they're going there. Yeah, but it might have been too late, in fact. So you are right. Um, they should have moved a little bit earlier. Pasha is there, he does miss the shot, and the bomb is going to go down. So, whatever opening Virtus Pro had is is sort of gone away now. It's kind of, that's surprising to me that they didn't rotate out. I mean, they had Bialy really close on the ramp, he cleared a ramp. They had Snacks all the way push up in halls. I guess maybe they figured that they would fall back from B. But to not have the third guy that was A go to B at that point is kind of, that's, that's, that's a risky play not to rotate out. Yeah. That would have given them a lot because they already had two people up there. If they had had, you know, another one coming in, it could have could have resulted in some good kills. As it is, the only one who went down is the one guy who had a pistol. So actually, you know, great round from USSR. They, and it's actually something that a lot of teams I think make the, a big mistake is if they're playing in an anti eco and they lose one guy, it's like the whole team freezes and it's almost like, you know, that opens up for even more kills to happen. But it seems like the terrorist side here they managed to adjust pretty well to it. Yeah, they were. I, I definitely agree with that. You know, once that first guy dies, everyone's just like kind of panicking, trying to figure out where he died from and trying to trade. And it oftentimes results in another person dying. So, yeah, it was very good. Uh, very good kind of reading it and just going to be with it. Oh, and good timing from Lamp. Pasha was there peeking just uh, just as long as he was peeking. Lamp wasn't moving and then he moved just in time. Taz close here with the P2000 in hand, but Lamp is just pl still playing this really great flashes rain in and he might be able to take one down but he's gonna play it even safer and i'm actually i'm actually really gonna applaud this i think right now ussr are playing with a lot of respect for virtus pro but they're making smart decisions they're not scared they're just playing smartly yeah definitely they're definitely taking it slow taking their time clearing what needs to be cleared and they're able to hit all their shots so far neo has picked up the scout looking for the shot here but it's a one on four so bomb is gonna go down and Ah, maybe there could have been a cool headshot, but it doesn't happen. Kibakin will pick up a triple double for Lamp, and we're at a three and zero scoreline. But obviously, he co here comes the big test. Yeah, I just had to comment. The name Lamp, like that's just a very random name. I think I, I actually respect somebody if you have a name like that, like Lamp, like Rug, or it, Coffee, or some something weird. It reminds every time I see it, it reminds me of Anchorman, right? With <laughs> yeah. Steve Carell. I don't know why. <laughs> I love lamp. <laughs> Almost want to say it just because it's such a. Somehow that's a. Re I'm not. I'm actually not a big fan of funny movies because I think movies. I know when, you know, when I go into a movie and I think it's gonna be a fun movie, I always feel like they're trying too hard somehow. But that movie's. I don't know. I really can't not hate that movie. It's good. Oh, I can't hate that movie is what I wanted to say. Lamp trying over here. See if he can do anything. Taz is dropping a little bit low. And actually, they almost could have killed Neo then. So Lamp just playing the, the lone role. Sinio in the middle is going to take down Pasha. So it's a early equal trade there. And yeah, Neo actually went for a pick at the what, what the Americans call the forest spot, which is that, that gay spot right next to Connector, and just gets headshotted for it. And he had to fall all the way back early on. Yeah, so Neo very near death. Bialy actually should have got that kill earlier on, and he's going to pick it up, and there we go. Snags and uh, Snags again with a double here coming in, so that's pretty good. But um, up until that point, up until that point, right at the end, it sort of felt like that could have actually still worked for USSR. I, I actually thought USSR was going to win that. Um, Neo got a quick pick in mid, and obviously Snags with those two kills on the ramp shut them down, but... I would definitely agree that it looked, at least if you, if you were to take a step back and look at it, just overview, no, you know, no players, no nothing, you would definitely think that USSR would have won that. 
What are they doing now? Pasha is really the only one holding mid. I guess Neo's sort of creeping up here, but... Oh, he's going to get the kill on Kibakan, so that's great news. But I was going to say, if Neo got smoked away, that would have been a big problem for them. Pasha, no trouble at all. Now... Now Virtus Pro, they're on the they're on the rails here. They're getting ready for it. It's a one on five, and this this round, this is what I was expecting from the very beginning for the Polish yeah. team. I thought that's what's what was going to happen. This is what you call no respect CS. <laughs> Everybody peeks everything. Everybody wins their fights because they think they're a lot better. Which you know, I would say, I would think that you the Virtus Pro people are individually better and more skilled than the USSR, USSR people. Yeah, and so they peak with the confidence. They get the kills, and this is where USSR just starts getting ran over. Hopefully, they're able to stop it, stop the train from uh, running them over the entire time. But well, we'll have you to know see. what, Hiko? It's not the train; it's the Virtus Plow. The Virtus Plow? That's a good point. That's a the, thing. That's a real thing. Now. <laughs> I know. I've seen that picture. Exactly. Well, they're going to be <laughs> rushing in through the fire and grenades and everything. Taz picking up kills left and right, almost gets knifed. Oh. Oh my god, Sensino just almost managed to do that. That would have been fantastic, but it doesn't actually work out. It's back to a three-on-three. Three. This is uh, this is the round where Virtus Pro, if, if Virtus Pro establishes their dominance again and just, just completely, we'll use your word, if they completely plow them, <laughs> then I think that psychological beating that USSR will have taken it would be too much. I'm, mm. I'm willing to count them out if Virtus Pro wins a round like they just did. Oh, they're going to run. Well, it's, um, it is going to be really close, isn't it? I mean, right now, we've, we've, there's already a, a respectable amount of money built up on Virtus Pro, and if they win more rounds at this point, they're going to be able to buy for such a long time. Snags actually pushing through the smoke, which is a borderline suicidal move against a lot of teams, but this seems to be working oh. out just fine. And even Neo through the smoke, going to pick up that kill, keep it real. He's going to go down as well. So, I mean... So the smokes that were going on, of course, Hiko, you know these, but just to draw on the map for the for the audience as well, the smokes that go on towards the connector and then towards the CT spawn for that A take, I feel like a lot of the times the, the problem for the CT side is to decide if they want to wait on one or the other side. But if you're on the outside of the smokes and you run through them when the push is happening, that is pretty dangerous, and that's what Snacks just did. Yep, it comes down to timing, you know. They're, oh, that was an insane shot by Lamp. My boy Lamp. But... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have to definitely you have to make the decision if you're going to go through it or not. And if you are going to go through it, you have to do it at the right time as they're executing because they're now staring at their own smokes as they're executing, right? So yeah, yeah, that's like the one the one chance you could maybe do it. Taz takes down Latro, so that's unfortunate. It's a two on three here, and actually considering this is an eco round from USSR, got to give them again a lot of credit for really. I mean, they have some talent to do something here. But they are just up against one of the best teams in the world, and that that is always going to be really tricky. Kibakan walking in, misses the shot, and then goes down. But two kills like this in a round, I think, is really good. They could have had a third one on Taz as well. Yeah, that was close. This is a pretty good eco. I mean, my boy Lamp with that huge one shot on, I think, Pasha opping the middle area, the window area. It was a nice shot by him. Without a doubt, but is it uh, is it going to be enough here? I mean, 5-3, it's a respectable score. They have money to buy, and I think even if they lose this upcoming round, they'll still be able to buy once more. Pasha actually hiding in that smoke. It's sort of covering his face, which is really interesting. Grenade will take down and keep it real, and now Pasha turns around. Incredible game sense, which is really what we expect from Pasha. The grenade's going to force him back, but he still, he still did enough for his team right there. And now it's your boy's lamp, Lamp's turn over here. He's going to see if he can take down Taz. Is he going to represent well enough? That's the thing. Oh, jump he one spots more. him. Oh. Does a lot of damage. Headshot thing looks like or something. And now the smoke's actually... Oh, it's going to allow him to get down here. He's looking for it. Lamp with really great game sense. This is nicely played. Taz will take him down, but actually... You know, if we're looking for an up-and-coming player, someone that we should look for more in the future. I mean, that's a pretty good sign, I think, the fact that he even managed to, to realize what was going on there. Yeah. yeah. I would have liked to see him kill Taz there. I think he could have, but unfortunately, Taz got the better of him. Yeah. Well, 6-3. Well, now we're talking six rounds in a row here for for Virtus Pro, which is a pattern that we just can't ignore, a trend that is, uh, that's undeniable. After Virtus Pro has picked up rifles, there's been not a single round for USSR, even though some of them have been sort of close, but the money here, Hiko, Taz yeah. with almost 16,000 and almost 13,000 on Bayali. 
Actually, I see five smokes on USSR side, so I would be surprised if they don't go for another A execute, which hasn't really been working for them. So I, I'm surprised that they're going to keep trying to go A. But I guess really, nothing really has been working for them since pissed around, so. Yeah. They might as well try something. And here we see the smokes. This is there what we were is. talking about yep. earlier. And now look at it. Pa Pasha, he's going to go on the other side. So not really committing to it. The only one who is actually is by Ali. And the guy already inside. Snacks up here. By Ali picks up a kill. Alive? Snacks. Oh, my God. How is Snacks still alive? I don't know. He got a triple spray down. Oh, my God. Snacks was in that corner in the smoke. And somebody came out. I think it was Kibikin. Came out in the smoke completely blind. Shined like 10 HP. And Snacks just backed up in the smoke and didn't die. And then after that, he I, I switched off him and he got three kills somehow through the smoke. That's crazy. <laughs> that was really nicely played by him. Yeah, I, I've i heard from a lot of different players, especially actually American players, saying there's nothing they hate more than the world than playing against Snacks. They feel like he's just so, like, oh, especially through smoke, I've heard a lot of people complain about Snacks and smokes. Yeah, definitely. It's definitely something that we have to, we had to be afraid of when we played them at ESA land. We knew if we see a smoke... Just avoid it. Wait for snacks. He's pushing if he's there. Uh, well, not going to be the 1D this time. Bailey picks up the triple and... Speaker snacks. He's top fracking. 13, 0, and 5. Well, do you think it's... I feel like snacks, in terms of competitive Counter-Strike, the same is true for Bailey. It's sort of... They're sort of newcomers on the on the on the scene in total, whereas some of the some of the older players that you've played against for a long time, like Get Right or Forest, or you know some of some of the other really star players, Taz and Bailey and uh, sorry, Taz and Pasha and Neo too, maybe you know their playstyle a little bit more. Whereas you know it's going to take a while before everyone starts figuring out exactly what you know what kind of player Snags is. I mean, maybe, but since they won. Poland, EMS Poland, I feel like everyone's kind of analyzed them, right? I've, they're, they, for a bit there, they, they turn into the team to beat. They turn into the new NIP. Mm. So, well, do you think that's enough time then to, for, for, for the, the rest of the competitive team to to spend time working on them? Um, I think everyone kind of, they, they have, and I think that's kind of one of the reasons why Virtus Pro hasn't been so successful as they, they have been in the past. All right. Well, good round coming out from USSR. Look at this dub, um, Sensino, and also double from Kibakin, and this is a one-on-four for Pasha, and he may be good, but this should be a round that they should be able to win, especially because they've been playing carefully and really smartly so far, USSR. So 8-4 is actually a lot better than I thought they would have been able to do, and there it is, running headshot from Sensino, and it's going to be 8-4, so nicely done. Yeah, I, I missed most of what happened there, but yeah, great job, USSR. That was a sick round, guys. Well, you got the you got the Hiko <laughs> the Hiko thumbs up. Is it the golf clap? Is it time for us? Uh, no, not yet. I'll tell you what, if USSR wins us have eight seven, you and I will give them a golf clap in unison. All right. Deal? We will definitely <laughs> do that. If that if that's a thing, if they win the next three rounds, that'd be very impressive. I actually I'm already uh, pleased with how USSR are playing. Uh, Pasha. Can't really complain much about him either. Gonna pick up one kill, but he actually goes down to Kipik, and then they sort of just relax for a little bit. Taz still playing the same way he's been playing all the time over here. Not really to get a lot of frags, but just to see how many people are coming, and he's only ever, it seems like, spotting Lamp. They have, like, their own thing going on over here. Yeah. The Lamp has gone towards B almost every round, so... Oh. Yeah. That is... Well, Lamp was turned off. Yeah. Um, just, you know, put out like that. Molotov goes off, doesn't hit Kibikin, but buys a little bit of time for Bayali to get some backup in this bomb site. Actually still going to take down Sensino and a double kill, a triple kill from oh. Bayali. Very smooth play at the end. Last two headshots were definitely sexy. Now it's going to be the 14th round, but 9-4 is what we're looking for. Nice play by Bayali in the site there. Um, wh whoever it was that jumped over the stairs onto the A ramp boxes... Just flying over his head, caught all their attention, and Bialy was just able to go to work from the site, just right in the side of all their heads. Oh, good grenade on lamp and oh, follow-up right. shot. Oh man. You gotta yep. get that kill, lamp. Not ideal. Right, good flashes to follow up. Not a lot of rifles here on USSR, but they are still pretty adamant about this A push. They really want to make it work. They have all the smokes up, but if you look at it, Virtus Pro are on the wrong side of the smokes. 
They're inside the smoke perimeter, which is not really what USSR want when once they're pushing through. They obviously want them to be on the other side. And now, well, a one on three. Neo, even with a pistol, is going to pick off Kibakan, and it's going to be 10 4 here. Yeah. I mean, I think that was a decent idea by USSR to buy an op and try to get that early pick. And maybe if Lamp hit his shot and killed Bialy in the site, they might be able to, to run with it. But unfortunately, he didn't. The guy Halls peaked a little too early again. And that's something that they actually have been doing most of the half. The guy Halls peaked super early. And he died there. And then everything went downhill from there. Oh, Pasha caught reloading, but Snags is there to pick it up. So, gotta have to restrain myself a little bit. Not too exciting there. Still a big lead here. Oh, oh. Latro coming out with a good headshot. See if Keep It Real can pick up Taz here. He won't. And the grenade. Oh, that should have been a kill, but it isn't. Taz stays alive on 14 HP. And we're looking at 11 to 4 scoreline in favor of Virtus Pro. But I still want to congratulate uh, USSR for playing really well. And it isn't over yet. They pick up the pistol round like they did in the first half. If they do it on the second half, maybe they can actually have a pretty good scoreline here. Yeah, and me knowing Virtus Pro, I'm interested to see if they do their normal strat where they throw the smokes up from A on T pistol and they run through them. And you know who I'm talking about, don't you? Good old Snacks. <laughs> he rushes through the smoke and tries to get towards connector. And that's I've seen them do that three or four times now in tournaments. So I'm interested to see if they try it again against a team like USSR online. Well, we're about to find out. I'm definitely interested. Um, if you are joining us just now, then welcome to the stream. This is Room on Fire. I'm Anders. With me is Hiko Phone Complexity. And we've got the SLTV Star Series Season 10 match going on here between USSR and Virtus Pro. After this, we have even more coming up. Then it's going to be Epsilon playing against Virtus Pro. So that's going to be a really sick game. And it's coming up right afterwards. So you don't want to go anywhere. But what you do want to do is follow the stream. Just click the follow button, the little heart there. And we definitely appreciate it. We're trying to do as much we can to make Counter-Strike grow even bigger. And obviously, you can follow Hiko as well on Twitter. That's col underscore Hiko on Twitter. Go and follow him right there. Now, let's see what they're going to do. Actually, looks like they're moving down towards Underpass here. Yeah, all five armor. Yeah. And very minimal nades on CT side, too. They only have one nade and two flashes. Most of them bought armor, it looks like. Oh my oh, god! <laughs> Snags! Oh. Gods keep it real and then another headshot! What a monster! My oh, god! Oh. You must be joking! Somebody stop him! Lamp is gonna be the next victim! Just one more click here and he will have done it! Grenade is out! Snags wants it! Snags okay, gets bye. it! The four kill coming out and that was fantastic! I don't think I've ever seen a quad kill start with a knife like that! That was really, um, like, very impressive aim by Snag. That first knife kill, picking up the USP. One shot in the guy in the site, pretty much one shot in the guy spawn too, and then another headshot for the guy kitchen. It's a really nice play. Really just solid aim from him that round. I feel like that this whole game was worth it because Snax gave us that one round. Yeah. Just definitely. That, that's it. That's all we wanted to see. A quad kill started out with a knife. Fair enough then. And USSR trying something that I actually am a big fan of. Not quite the way they did it. So I'll try and explain, and I think I guess Hiko, you've already seen this a million times, but um, mm -hmm. this kind of setup where you have, because there's three entrances into the middle, there's the window, there's the connector, and then there's the catwalk in from B. So three different angles to hold from. If you have your CT side stacked up in all these three angles, it doesn't really matter what combination you use, but just have everybody in the team here, and then one guy throws a flashbang over the wall from A bomb site into the middle, and everyone peeks after it. I feel like. I mean, it's a bit of a situational thing, but if you're lucky and the terrorist team is actually there, you can sometimes get some really great kills in. So I'm, a I'm sorry that they pushed without any flashbangs there. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. And I also sucked that uh, Virtus Pro threw a, a nade into the window early and did like 70 or so damage to the guy that was window two. Yeah. It's not exactly ideal. By Ali's picking up a P90 here, and USSR have to try and buy, even though it's not the fourth round, it's the third round here. They're buying from us, and I don't really blame them. They realize if, they, if they're going to try and win this, they, they need to come back here. Taz jumping and shooting with the AK, which is definitely not in any Counter-Strike manual, but it somehow still works oh, out. Man. Now it's going to be keep it real, alone, in a one-on-five. There it is. And that's probably the nail in the coffin here. If it wasn't already, you know, in the ground and dirt was being thrown upon it, it's it's very, very late now. 14-4 here. 
Yeah, Virtus Pro kept their their low rifles. I mean, Bialy had a P90. I think somebody else had a Galil that round too. And USSR full bot. And well, I think they only got one kill, so definitely not something that should happen. But to be expected, I guess, by these teams. Yeah, it is. It is tricky playing against the team of of Virtus Pro's caliber when you when you know. When you maybe don't, when you aren't quite in the same league yourself, I guess it can be a little bit overwhelming. We'll see Latro coming out here, doesn't get the kill, and Lamp has a scout and is very far away from all the action. Come on, Lamp. This is all you, man. <laughs> it's the Hiko motivational speech. <laughs> I have faith. You can do it, just believe in yourself. Well, maybe. Maybe we can see a cool scout shot here, but I'm guessing it's not going to be long before they come hunting for him. They have the money for it anyway if they want to. It doesn't look like anyone's really pushing it, at least. Maybe now they will. Uh, maybe Bialy. So, hmm, I don't know. It feels like, to, you know, 14-4, if you're just joining and you're watching and you're thinking, all right, well, you know, this went as expected. It was just, you know, Virtus Pro crushing a much worse opponent. I feel like maybe that's a little bit unfair. I actually think USSR has shown us some some cool stuff already and some, you know, some good signs in terms of being a team and just, you know, coordinating attacks and stuff like that. So, yeah, I don't want to discredit them completely here. Yeah, I, I would agree. They definitely had... I mean, they, they had the good smokes, they had the good flashes, they had decent executes. I think, unfortunately for them, whoever was playing Halls would always peak a little bit too early than he should have and most of the time got picked before anyone was really ready. But, yeah, they're definitely not, like, a, a terrible team. There's a good pickoff again. Kibakan already taken down one with the Max 7, and Sancino is going to take down another kill right here, so maybe it isn't quite over yet. Bayali and Taz still alive, but two on four. They can do it, because we've seen them already once win some pretty ridiculous comeback rounds, but um, this one might just be USSR's. Flashbang goes up there. Taz does turn around for it, and... He's going to peek into the bomb site. Sprays down Kipigan. Now he's going to go for another one. He realizes there's someone down there. And Bayali will go down to uh, to Latro. So not at all a bad round coming out here. Taz will drop. And it's going to be 15-5. There you go. We're not going to we're not gonna call it what we you want to call it. We're not going to jinx it. But who knows? Maybe that's the round they needed. Maybe that's the, that's the swing right there. The ultra comeback. This is where they oh, just... You said the word. Oh, you oh. jinxed it. Well, I just wanted to see them invest into like five auto snipers and <laughs> revolutionize the game. Yeah. Lamp actually has a scout again. I guess he's doing like the double walk thing where he's jumping. Yeah, he is. Oh, but it will be Latro to pick up the opening kill here. Nicely done. A return quickly, but Kibakan is there as well. So, so far it's off to a good start, but then Latro dies. And here's the big difference. USSR don't have anyone inside the smoke. And if Kibakan tries to run through now, that's going to be dangerous. This is what didn't happen to Virtus Pro a lot when they were on the CT side. Sinio's trying to uh, push through them. Or Sinsino, sorry. And it's going to be down to Kibakan and Lamp. Two on three. The bomb goes down. And Kibakan is actually in the smoke here at the get right position. Interesting. Oh, all right. Lamp steps it up and Kipperkin is there as well. Now they just have to find Neo, but he's going to try and find them. He won't. Kipperkin with a triple kill and a very cool retake. All right. Yeah. What What is the gear right spot? Is that in between the stairs and the, the, ramp, yeah. the boxes? Yeah, in between stairs and what we call Tetris sometimes. Okay. So, yeah, we call that gear right. At least some people do. I don't know if everyone does. Yeah. We call that like closet, but yeah, I understand. He he was it was smart of him. He got in that spot and they didn't see him, so he sat in the smoke for so long and was able to just kill a guy, you know, completely unexpecting it. And what's really cool is that he actually threw that smoke himself with an underhand throw using Virtus Pro smoke. So there was a lot of thought that went into that from uh, from from Kibikin. So that was just really well played. Nice pick off early on here. Keep it real. Going to be taking down Pasha and. It's a swift return. Latro goes down. Now they're trying to see if they can get this happening, and they will actually pick up another one here. It's Kipperkin again doing a lot of work. Now it's a three on four here, and Taz very nearly dead, but he gets the kill. Anyway, that should have been Taz dying, I think. Oh. And he will die. Oh, by Ali. Gets the one. Now it's a one on two. Now it's a one on one by Ali. Please 
Have mercy on Lamp. You've already got the triple kill. Can't you have him win the round here so they can just get a little bit more? Because this was a one-on-three for Bayali, and he already killed one guy earlier in the round. Now he's walking in. Lamp is right up there, and Bayali just has to hit one shot with the AK. As long as it's a headshot, he'll be fine. And there's still time for, for Bayali to do this. He's picked up the bomb as well, and Lamp is trying to stay close, which I think is the right move here. I think so, too. Here's the shot. Don't stand up, Bayali. Right, he's going to be walking in, and Lamp trying to see if he can find it. Get back in. Actually, there sorry, Riley's going to go down, and Lamp will pick up the kill. Very nicely done. So it's a shame that they almost lost the round to that one on three, but Lamp is... He's hes still got your back here, Hiko. Yeah, my boy Lamp. Let's go, Lamp. And I see Sir Scoots in the, in the chat <laughs> typing, I like Lamp. So good job, see? Scoots. See? He sides with me. Sir Scoots can spot a good name from a mile away, just like I can. It's a rare talent, but I appreciate it nonetheless. Definitely good. And speaking of Scoots, Scott, I look forward to seeing you in London soon. He's going to be there for the G3 League, so... Been mm. too long, been too long at this point. Keep it real, opening down the middle with a lovely stat tracked Asimov. I'm not even a little bit jealous. He's going to go oh. down anyway, and Latro now alone defending, not looking good. In fact, he's going to go down, so now Virtus Pro have had enough, and they just want to close this game, and they will. Lamp, he may be good. He may have a great name, but I'm not sure it's going to be quite enough here. Good headshot coming in, jumps down, and we'll go down to Pasha. 16-7, and I don't know. I actually, I, I think Virtus Pro, if nothing else, they won They won a little bit of respect for me. I think actually that was not a not a terrible game for them. No, it wasn't It wasn't like a, a complete shutout. It, wasn't, it definitely wasn't a 16-0, but they did win pistol round first half, and they ended up losing 11-4. Yeah. And I think, no, they lost Pistol around second half. They just had like a few rounds there where they yeah. won. But yeah, definitely, definitely not looking terrible. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was to be expected this result. I think.